So, Dr. Scholz, today I wanted to talk about the timing of prostate cancer. Many times people are diagnosed with the word cancer, and when it comes to prostate cancer, there's different types of prostate cancer, and there's so much power to the word cancer that a lot of anxiety and fear, um, and rightfully so, can come up, but there isn't a lot of time that patients have with doctors explaining what type of cancer it is, how fast is it growing, when can you decide upon treatment, do you have time to research, do you not, is there a difference between the time you would have with a Gleason 6 prostate cancer versus a Gleason 9 or 10. So these are the types of questions I wanted to discuss today because patients are in an industry where, you know, they have a limited amount of time with doctors because of how the doctor scheduled, they're pack maxed out with patients in these offices, and a lot of it's driven by financial gain. So to bring clarity to the situation, my first question is how much time would you say that somebody, let's just go straight to it, that would you say someone who has like Gleason 9 or 10 would have to decide upon getting treatment? Because a lot of times when patients are walking in, I think they, they, they're getting scheduled like in two weeks, we're getting this out. Absolutely. And uh, the answer, I think, let's just come out with the numbers so people can, let's say two to three months. Let's say if you're diagnosed with Gleason 10 and you're treatment is postponed for two or three months, which sounds uh, irresponsible. The chances that that two to three month delay, even with a Gleason 10, is going to make a big difference in your future is extremely small, less than 1%. If you can just uh, take it down a notch and start to understand what's going on with this new diagnosis, uh, the chances that you're uh, going to avoid serious mistakes by allowing yourself that breathing space um, is so much greater. Serious mistakes are much more likely to hurt you than a delay of treatment for two to three months. Why would you delay treatment? Um, well, the idea of delaying treatment with a serious variant of prostate cancer uh, would mean delaying surgery or radiation. Why would you delay other treatments like hormone treatment? Well, there's one good reason to delay treatment with hormone treatment is you want to get all your staging in. You want to at these day, this era, you want to get a PSMA PET scan. Studies are showing that if you get on hormone treatment, it may actually enhance the accuracy of the PSMA PET scan. I'm not advising people to do that, but uh, with the older CAT scans and bone scans, we were concerned about erasing the cancer and not knowing how extensive the disease was before you go embark upon treatment. You want to know accurate information so that it, it, the right type of radiation, the right duration of hormone treatment, and these sorts of things. So you just mentioned a kind of a worst case scenario. Uh, let's say someone even has uh, metastatic disease. How long can they wait before they start treatment? A month or two is not, 99.9% .9 of the time is not going to make a big difference. So people have some breathing space. And then after you've begun hormone treatment for these more severe variants of prostate cancer, or Gleason 9 or metastatic disease, once you embark upon the hormone treatment, you've basically put the disease in, in the icebox. In the old days, we used to steer away from radiation and surgery and advise patients to simply do hormone treatment, and they could keep their disease in check with hormone treatment for 5, 10, 15 years without even breaking a sweat. So when you talk about postponing treatment, uh, oftentimes we're talking about the Gleason 6s or 7s, which may go on active surveillance, or maybe they'll just have some sort of radiation or surgery. We know they can postpone treatment for 6 to 12 months. How do we know that? In the old days, radi uh, surgery was the gold standard. Radiation was not really developed. And there were only a few good surgeons across the nation who had proven by reputation that they could help some men retain uh, sexual function. And they had very long waiting lists, lasting months, before people could get in to have their operation. And so uh, enterprising uh, researchers went back and looked at the databases to find out uh, if those patients who were postponed in their treatment for more than six months uh, whether they had worse outcomes compared to the ones that got in right away for their operation. No difference in long-term outcomes. A six-month delay for patients that had Gleason 7s, sometimes Gleason 8s, did not translate into worse cure rates compared to the people that had immediate treatment.
Before I get to my next question on the timing of prostate cancer, I just wanted to remind you that we're a nonprofit organization and all the videos on this channel are brought to you by donations from people just like you. If you would like to join our cause, you can do so and donate at pcri.org forward slash donate. Now back to this video. Why is it then that when patients are diagnosed, they're pushed to treatment so quickly? If they have time, you know, what is causing this, you know, si this systematic, it's widespread, it's actually worldwide that we see that people are being pushed to treatment immediately. There's several reasons. We as caregivers are aware of the emotional consternation that our clients have. We, and it's hard to talk people down and reassure them, it sounds like you don't care or that you don't take the disease seriously. You know, as a caregiver, I don't want to position myself into this, you, know, I just, you just have cancer, don't worry. It takes a lot, of, uh, a lot of skill to convey that this isn't as serious as other cancers, and it takes time. So it's much easier to just go with the flow of this emotional energy, the, the, the fear that, and the anxiety that people have, and use that. Surgeons will tend to kind of steer it towards, let's get a quick operation, which I think is a real disservice to patients because they don't then learn about other options. I think surgeons kind of subconsciously realize that the more time that goes on <laughs> that people have to study this whole issue, the less likely they are to do an operation. So it kind of serves the surgeon's purposes to allow that anxiety to, to kind of uh, go forward. It's a very natural anxiety because when you look at the other cancers, the pancreas cancers, the bone cancers, the lung cancers, those are a different category of seriousness compared to prostate cancer. Even the high-grade prostate cancers are nowhere near as serious as those other types of cancers. And the sense of urgency is appropriate and natural. So I think it's kind of in a backdoor way serves the surgeon's purposes and gets people into the operating room where if they thought about more, they might pick another treatment, a seed implant or an active surveillance option. Uh, and uh, it is difficult for us caregivers to position ourselves as, uh, don't worry, it's just cancer. It, it sounds foolish. And, uh, and so we, it's just easier to allow their natural uh, anxiety to power them into the treatment perhaps that, that the surgeons want to do anyway. So when it comes to the patient who has just been diagnosed, maybe the surgeon is suggesting you know, that they have treatment in two weeks, have surgery in two weeks, and they're saying, I want to take more time to research. What do you suggest the patient does with their physician in order to get that time? Because I think a lot of patients feel that this is a urologist, they're an expert. How do I even have this conversation with them that I want to take a moment to do my research and find out what treatments I want? Well, I think it is a hard thing. I mean, the industry, the prostate cancer industry is a very powerful multi-billion dollar industry. And these doctors, myself included, we have a lot of experience talking to people, dozens of people daily and, and um, we speak with authority and, and we have a kind of a conclusive attitude. I think what patients have to temper that with is that the world is changing very quickly. We see uh, artificial intelligence coming along. We've got fabulous new uh, PSMA PET scans that are telling us information we never had before. And uh, as the industry is going through these growth pains and as the doctors are at varying levels of understanding, even though they may not know it, uh, a well-researched patient who goes out and does his homework, in some cases, they're gonna discover they know more about the latest prostate cancer care than the doctor does. And that's a, that's a kind of a rude awakening. But the stakes here are so high, people do need to do their own research. This is why the PCRI exists. We're here to, to uh, help people understand all their options. And the, it is a difficult thing. We wanna respect these caregivers. They're highly trained, but they're also very busy with a you know, dozens of different types of treatments, and uh, they may not be on the same wavelength as, as, as the patients who are trying to, yes, get cured, but also preserve their quality of life. So let's talk about patients who have been diagnosed with a Gleason 6 prostate cancer. How much time do they have? You know, Gleason 6 doesn't metastasize, so this concept is actually huge. I mean, the timeline seems like they would have a lot of time to decide if they wanted to get treatment, and can we discuss not getting treatment versus getting, versus getting treatment? When I I'm counseling uh, newly diagnosed Gleason 6 patients. And uh, after explaining carefully that they have a, a variant of cancer that never spreads and that uh, they have, they can go on active surveillance. And then the uh, patients will come back at me uh, after that conversation has occurred and say, but how long can I wait before I treat it? And I've just basically told them, 
indefinitely, uh, and it didn't really register with them. I think it's, it's very hard for our human minds to conceptualize the fact that certain types of prostate cancer really are harmless. I think the next question that comes up, well, then why do we even bother to watch it? Why can't I just walk away and forget about it? And the answer to that is that prostate cancer is so common that the danger for men with Gleason 6 prostate cancer isn't their Gleason 6, it's that they still have a prostate, that they can get a brand new prostate cancer, a higher grade variant that could become serious. The good news is that studies have shown that in men with Gleason 6 prostate cancer, because they're being watched so closely, their prostate cancer mortality rates are lower than the prostate cancer mortality rates in the general male population. The other men are the ones out there, the ones that have been diagnosed are the ones we need to worry about that aren't doing their PSA levels, that are getting diagnosed with more advanced stages because they aren't being closely monitored. This is why we closely monitor Gleason 6. Not because of the Gleason 6, but because all men need to be closely monitored for the development of new higher grade cancers so that we can catch them at an early and curable stage. Thank you for mentioning that because men with Gleason 6, you know, I talked to them and there's a lot of, you know, active surveillance advocates. These people have been diagnosed with Gleason 6 and they were upset how they went through the system. But the fact that they've been, you know, closely monitored and they're having a better outcome as far as, you know, mortality rates for men who have never even been, you know, monitored at all, that's a huge point and a huge benefit. So I really appreciate that. Now, when it comes to Gleason 7, there's, you know, two types that we have, the 3 plus 4 and the 4 plus 3, the 4 plus 3 being more serious. So what does the monitoring system look like and the timing of treatment look like in those scenarios? I'm glad we can reemphasize that. Uh, Gleason 3 plus 4s and 4 plus 3s are the typical profile of who the surgeons really want to operate on. It's not not too high grade and it's not three plus three. Not that I'm an advocate of surgery really for anybody at this point because I think there are better, op better options out there. But in that study that I cited previously, a six month delay had no impact at all on cure rates. It's hard for us to wrap our minds around that because with any other type of cancer, that would be malpractice to think about waiting six months. But over and over, studies have confirmed that the uh, spread of prostate cancer takes years and that people have all the time that they want. I know it's emotionally uncomfortable to live in ambiguity and have to go through searching and learning. And I understand the desire to get some closure and figure out what you want to do. But don't let fear of cancer spread drive the decision-making process. Let the desire to really understand what you're doing before you make an irreversible decision drive the decision-making process. So today we talked about the timing of prostate cancer. The reason I bring this up is I've read your comments on our YouTube channel. And I've gotten questions like, my surgeon has scheduled me in two weeks for surgery and I feel like I barely was just diagnosed and I don't have time to research. Or my PSA results aren't coming back for a couple weeks or maybe an imaging study. And it's giving a lot of anxiety because it's cancer and it's growing. Well, I want to reassure you that prostate cancer is one of the slowest growing cancers. And while we still take this very seriously because there's some types of prostate cancers that don't metastasize and some that do, some have a higher rate of metastasis than others, even in the most um, aggressive type of prostate cancer, you still have time to decide what type of treatment you want and also see different people for different opinions. Maybe you're seeing a urologist and you want to see a medical oncologist, an interventional radiologist, and so forth. The point of that is that when you decide upon a treatment, there's also possible side effects that come with it. And you wanna have a game plan for how to handle those side effects. You wanna know how it's going to affect your life, your work, your family, and the intricacies of what you do on a day-to-day -day level. If you take time to research the right treatment for you, you also can take time to research how to mitigate the side effects and get the support you need. So if you were recently diagnosed, I would suggest start your research now as you are watching this video, but also maybe find a prostate cancer support group, get different opinions, talk to a friend maybe you know that had prostate cancer what their experience were read reviews on you know the websites of these doctors so you can see what type of reviews they have from the treatments that they're giving see if they've even um, done some research in those areas and if they've written papers on them all this research will help you to have a better conversation with your medical team and you'll go in there knowing with a little more confidence I've taken the time to do the research because I had time so I just am here to remind you you have time I want you to rem um, think about yourself as a whole person and it's not just the prostate cancer we want to treat. We want to make sure that you're handling those side effects and any issues you may have and it's fitting into your lifestyle. 
Please remember you're not alone. If you would like help with your particular case, you can visit our website, pcri.org forward slash helpline and talk to one of our prostate cancer patients. They've been through this situation, but they also have um, been trained by our medical oncology team so they can answer a lot of your questions and just give you information so that you have a more informed conversation with your medical team. Also, please remember that we're a 501c3 nonprofit. If you would like to donate and join our cause, you can do so at pcri.org forward slash donate. But most of all, please remember, you're not alone. PCRI is here for you, and I hope you have a great week.